I'm doing the next two sections together um, because it it helps to learn all, what the ratios are for all three trig functions before you do any work on any of the trig functions. It puts them together. So our trig ratios for this class are ratios of side lengths of a right triangle. So I'm given a triangle and one of the angles in it. I'm going to call that angle theta. So our first step, anytime we're going to do a trig ratio, is we are going to label the sides. Okay, the first side I label is the opposite side, the side opposite the angle. So I'm going to call this one over here the opposite. The next one I'm going to label is the hypotenuse. Yes, I'm using mixed cases. Call that HYP. And the last one we're going to label, we are going to call the adjacent side. Okay, so that's our first step. Okay, then we are going to end up picking a trig ratio. For our step two, we are going to be using a trig ratio. So this is where some memorization is going to come into play. On your calculator, you have three trig buttons. They are sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, the way you can remember what the ratios are, there are going to be two different ways that I'm going to have you do it. Okay, the first one, remember that these are ratios. You're going to use the sentence O heck, another hour of algebra okay so that means the o and the h go with the sine the a and the h go with the cosine the o and the a go with the tangent well that's provided that they always keep calculators with the buttons in the same order the other way that you could use to come up with the exact same ratios is the following sum old hippies came and had tons of avocados. Okay. And what both of these little cheats on coming up with the ratios give you is what our actual ratios are. The sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of the O over H, opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is equal to A over H, adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is equal to O over A, which is opposite over adjacent. Okay. So um, we're going to use these ratios once we have a properly labeled triangle in order to do problems. Okay. Um, we're going to start out just um, using these to be able to find side lengths. And in the Solving Right Triangles lecture, our next lecture, we're going to figure out about inverse trig ratios, which are going to give us angle measurements. So let me go to IX 
So, um, let me put it on this screen and click IXL. Yep, it's there. So, 9 4, find the tangent ratio. Okay. Tangent, remember, let me zoom in a little bit. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay. The, let me pull up my piece of paper here really quick. So they want angle I. So top one is my opposite. The left one is going to be my adjacent. So that would be 12 fifths is the answer. And I'm going to go 12 over 5. Oops, I actually, oops, I didn't have my piece of paper in there for you. Um, so biggest thing is if we know the angle, label the sides opposite adjacent 12 over five. So let me come in here and do the 12 over five. Uh, I don't know if it's going to accept that. Let me put the little thing here. 12 fifths. Angle J opposite over adjacent. 72 over 65, what I'm going to put in there. T, 60 over 32. Now let's look at that. 60 over 32 simplifies as um, 4 goes into both of these. 4 goes into 60 15 times. 4 goes into 32 8 times, 15 eighths. I know 15 eighths is in the is the answer. I want to see if they're going to let you put 60 over 32 in there. I'm purposely maybe getting this one wrong. Intentional. He said the correct answer is 15 eighths, so they do want simplified fractions. Okay. Tangent of R, 30 over 16. Is 2 goes into that 15 times. 15 eighths, look at that. Tangent of R, 15 eighths. Um, I'm gonna go to the next lesson. That's basically how you do that group. Um, it's just straight looking at it. Find a side length using the tangent ratio. Okay, now this is a calculator problem. Make sure you're on degrees mode on your calculator. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. Okay. So here, they want me to find FG. Okay. I'm going to draw this at 40. I'm going to call this X. That's the one they want me to find, and this is 5. I know that the tangent of 40 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's equal to 5 over x. If I want to solve for x, so x is equal to 5 over the tangent of 40 degrees. And they tell you to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to do 5 over tangent 40. It says 5.9, so this is what I get, is I get 5.9587, that's going to round to 6.0. Next one. Um, I want to find xy. So I'm going to just do my little thing. There's my x, I have a 2, I have a 68. I know that the tangent of 68 degrees is equal to x over 2. So x is equal to 2 times the tangent of 68 degrees. 
2 times tangent 68, 4.95 dot 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 so that's going to be a 5.0 i've done one i've done one each of the two different ways that you can get your questions here um i'm going to do one more of these and we're going to go do some sines and cosines i want to find gi i want to find opposite if i know the tangent of 29 degrees is opposite x over adjacent 7. So x is equal to 7 times the tangent of 29 degrees. 7, 10, 29, 3.88, so 3.9. Okay, um, I'm going to go back and we're going to do some sines and cosines. So I've done those two. Let's look at um, break ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. So tangent, we're doing ang ang angle X. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, 80 over 39. Sine of T is opposite over hypotenuse, 15 seventeenths, 15 seventeenths. Cosine of V is adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 37 um, I'm going to jump a level. Sine of V. Okay. This is a right triangle. If I, I want to know what the sine of V is, I need opposite and hypotenuse. Well, I don't have the opposite. So here we go. I have a triangle. I'm going to draw it slightly differently. I'm still going to use the same correct letters. This is V, W. This is 32. This is 68. This is U. I need the hypotenuse. Well, that is the square root of 32 squared plus 68 squared. The square root of 32 squared plus 68 squared. Actually, no. They gave you the hypotenuse. So, let's go back. Redraw the picture. The way they drew it. Doot, 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 doot. So I get it right. 32, 68, B, W, U, opposite, hotness. They want the sine. So this is the square root of 68 squared minus 32 squared. Square root of 68 squared minus 32 squared. This is 60. So sine is 60 over 68. Four goes into both of those. Four goes into 60 15 times and 17 times for the bottom, 15 seventeenths. That's a level two question. So cosine, in this case, I'm going to have to find the hypotenuse. Um, let's go to a level three question. Let's find the sine, cosine, and tangent of that triangle. Um, of angle X. Um, my angle of interest is this one. I have a 24. I have a 74. This is the square root of 74 squared minus 24 squared. And that's 70. So, let's label my sides, um, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, some old 
hippies came and had tons of avocados. So first one is opposite over hypotenuse 70 over 74, which is 35 30 sevenths. Adjacent over hypotenuse 24 over 74, which is 12 over 37. And then opposite over adjacent, which is 70 over 24, which is 35 over 12. So the first one is 35 30 sevenths. The cosine is 12 30 sevenths. And then the tangent is 35 12. That's the three types of problems there. Um, I don't know, we're going to do some with radicals now. It says find the tangent of S. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's five fourths. Find the tangent of h, square root of 41 over 5. So nothing abnormal for these first couple. Cosine of f, adjacent over hypotenuse. So this one is a little bit different for my final answer. Okay, Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 5 over the square root of 89. But we do not like square roots in the bottom, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 89. And the final answer is going to be 5 root 89 over 89. A fraction, 5 root 89 over 89. Tangent of V, 5, 6. That one's straightforward. Actually, let's jump a level. Sine of H. I have this triangle here. I have 2 root 7. I have 6. And I have H. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, I need the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the square root of 6 squared plus 2 root 7 squared, okay? Well, that's 36. That's 14 times 2, 4. Um, okay. So this is this part here, 2 squared root 7 squared, which is 4 times 7, which is 28. 36 plus 28, 64. And then the square root of 64 is 8. And I want opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be 2 root 7 over 8, which is root 7 over 4. Cosine of Q is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, so let's draw the triangle. Have Q, 2 root 5, have square root of 77. And I need this number because I want adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to have something over the square root of 77. Well, that something is the square root of the square root of 77 squared minus 2 root 5 squared. That's going to be 77 minus, that's going to be 4 times 5, which is 20, 
which is the square root of 57. So adjacent over hypotenuse, and I get rid of that square root of 77 on the bottom by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 77. Okay, so 55 times 77, square root of 42.35 over 77. Um, I'm going to check some work really quick. There, the square root of open parentheses, the square root of 77, out closed squared minus open parentheses two root of five. Oh, close the parentheses squared. Square root of 57. I don't like that big number on the top, but I'm going to go for it. Because do not round, so we simplified radicals. So 4235 over 77. Forty-three eighty-nine. I must have multiplied wrong. But my work, oh, I did 55 times 77 instead of 57 times 77. So, again, that's next messy one. Um, level three, which you don't have to do because you'll already be over 70. Um, let's go look at... Let's look at the last one. Trig ratios, find a side length that was just like this up here. Complementary angles. This is something. Let's look at a triangle here. If this is my theta, this is going to be 90 minus theta. So for theta labeling, I've got opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. It goes with this one. For the complementary angle, I have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So what you've got is you've got the sine of theta, which is opposite over adjacent, I mean, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Well, look in the purple, it's A over H. So sine of theta is the cosine of 90 minus theta. The cosine of theta is the sine of 90 minus theta. So the cosine of 65, well, 90 minus 65 is 25. That would be the answer. Cosine of 15, that would be the sine of 75. Sine of 31, that would be cosine of 59. Cosine of 24 would be the sine of 66. I'm gonna, thought I, I said sine of 66. Oh, I clicked cosine. We're going to jump a level. This statement always or sometimes never true. If P and Q are acute angles, then the sine of P is cosine of Q. That would be sometimes true with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Oh, that one's always true. Got it. Which is equal to the cosine of 40, sine of 50. Get back to the word problems. If F and G add to 90, then the sine of F equals the sine of G. Sometimes, that's if it's a 45, 45, 90. If A and B are complementary, then the sine of B is cosine of A. That's always. If F and G are acute and F is 46, then the cosines are the same. Never. And that's enough to get you full credit there. 
So that gets us the first um, introduction to doing some trig. Um, take your time on doing the IXL so you get some practice. Um, a good portion of second semester of your next math class is trig. So having these um, trig ratios down right right now and using using them, being able to rearrange and manipulate them are it's going to benefit you in the long run. Um, again, memorize one of the two ways to come up with the ratios and remember that you're taking trig functions of angles to get those things.